There's a humanitarian crisis that we need to talk about, ladies and gentlemen. And it's not one of the humanitarian crises that you may be thinking of. It's not the Hawaii wildfire. It's not the wide open southern border and all the sex trafficking and human smuggling that accompany it. It's not the pandemic levels of homelessness and drug addiction and violent crime in our big cities. It's not even the fact that our average national lifespan is now going down because so many people are killing themselves. No. It's something much more serious and sobering than all that. In fact, Jim Eagle, I want you to play some maudlin piano music in the background, just like they do on the fake news. When they want the viewers to know they should be very, very emotionally invested in whatever nonsense it is they're peddling on that particular day. You know, the kind of music that you only ever used to hear on those Sally Struthers Feed the Children commercials, but it's now a, a regular feature of, of every evening national news broadcast. You know, vaguely depressing, but with sort of a slightly hopeful edge to it. Oh, there we go. I like that. Well done. He's not the best producer in the business for nothing, folks. I feel like we need some candles and some incense smoke to, to set the scene properly, but the hell with that. The maudlin piano music is just fine on its own. And I hear you asking... What humanitarian crisis could be so severe that it requires such absurd aesthetic accoutrements? Well, please allow me to tug your heartstrings. Now, if you've been on the internet for longer than five minutes, you're probably already familiar with Rule 34, which states that if a thing exists, there is porn of it. But far fewer people are familiar with Rule 35, which also is a universal truth. Rule 35 says, anytime there is any sort of technological innovation, it will be exploited first, and most effectively, by pornographers. We have also talked at some length in recent weeks about my firm belief that within the next 10 years, movies starring computer simulations of long dead actors will be more popular at the box office than movies starring actors who are currently alive. Well, that tidal wave is already starting to crash down on our cultural coastline, and wouldn't you know it, it is hitting the world of internet porn first and hardest. No pun intended. And it's already causing widespread devastation in one of our most vulnerable communities, cam whores. Or, if you prefer a less offensive term, girls who sell pictures of their buttholes online to make a living or to support their meth habit. Take your pick, I guess. It, it seems the digital AI revolution is already striking the internet cam whore community like a thunderclap of despair with vast numbers of cam whore fans, also known as young men without enough social skills and self-confidence to go get themselves laid like real men, abandoning living, breathing human cam whores in favor of computer-generated AI cam horrors, since I guess the technology has now progressed to the point where many of these pitiful idiot loser douchebags have developed a preference for buying pictures of cartoon buttholes instead of actual human buttholes. So if you're one of those clueless, oblivious parents who can't figure out how your 22-year-old daughter manages to pull down an income without ever leaving her bedroom, and you notice she's got less spending cash than normal, it may well be that she has been hawking pictures of her vajayjay to strange men online and business is suddenly not as good as it usually is. Oh, you thought she was just making YouTube videos in there? Yeah, sorry about that. She's actually been spreading her lady garden for every stranger on the interwebs who's willing to toss some spare change in her direction. Just don't call it prostitution because AOC will get very mad. Because sex work is sex work, she says, and she is very passionate about that point, for some reason. Now, I can't say whether there is something in her background or life experience that makes her so passionate about it. And obviously, I would never cast aspersions upon the moral character of a duly elected member of Congress, but suffice it to say, she is very adamant about the fact that selling pictures of your cooter to strangers on the interwebs is a real and honorable vocation that any young woman would be proud to aspire to. I mean, who the hell wants to be a doctor or a lawyer or a nuclear physicist when you can be just as successful peddling pictures of your twat to random perverts? The student loans are a hell of a lot easier to pay off, that's for damn sure. Now, it was only yesterday that I became aware of this newest scourge upon our society. Her even purveyors of pink taco portraits are being replaced by machines and having their livelihood threatened, so I got to thinking. 
I've got myself a bit of a platform now, a bit of public exposure, though of, of a decidedly different sort. So what can I do to help ameliorate this latest threat to hard-working Americans who ask nothing more than a level playing field on which to ply their trade, a fair opportunity to make their way in the world in a free and open marketplace of pussy picks, unencumbered by cartoon competition? So I channeled my inner Bob Geldof and I decided I should put together a benefit concert which I am proud to announce right here and now. We are still kicking around ideas for the name, but the best suggestion we have so far is Captain Curmudgeon's Mega Maga Meat Curtain Concert for the Cure. Now, I can't give away the names of any artists who will be appearing, but suffice it to say we have secured some of the very biggest names in the industry, and they all really, really like vaginas. So, no Elton John. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs>